Okay, so what we're talking about today is love. Just doing a little documentary thing. Check one, check two. Scene two dash one, grandma, marker. Talk to me about when you first met. I really don't, didn't know him. She was red haired, freckle face, and not neat. Well, he was always wearing like his little half shirt from football practice. <laughs> I went with a friend of mine. He wanted to date a girl that she was working with. And there was one seat left open. And I was saving the seat for another guy that I liked. And Greg sat down in the chair. And we ended up, before we knew it, uh, spending all, almost all night together, almost 3, 4 AM, before we realized what time it was and, and where the time had gone. We could have conversations. Deep conversations. You know, about a candy bar or about politics and life, you know, it didn't really matter. I almost missed that more than the sex. The day that I decided to ask her to marry me, uh, we both knew that that day was coming. Just a matter of when the best timing to get ma married was. We went to a small island that I can't pronounce. Brazil. And he took me to a beach. And she's got like a pair of jeans on with a hole in them like a zip-up fleece. You know, she was looking away and I said, hey, Lucy, will you marry me? And I pulled out the ring and I showed her the ring and her face got all big and bright and just like, I said, yes. I just hear this loud yell, Greg, you stud. And, and I got how old fashioned. Okay, so if we look back on your marriage. Yeah. Could you have had any idea what you were saying yes to? No. Um, <sighs> no, 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 no. <laughs> so when it comes to family, what are we saying yes to? For the life of the world, episode two, the economy of love. This is the story of the bigger picture. Evan, welcome to exile. The deeper mystery of faith. This is the story of God's mission in the world and our place in it. I'm Evan. Hi, I'm Evan. These are my friends. Evan, what's going on? And this is For the Life of the World, Letters to the Exiles. Test, test. Okay. So, there's a lot of hubbub about love and marriage and the state of the modern family. And as we navigate our way through exile, clearly we have some things to reckon with, especially when culture just keeps adding things to the table. For example, there's traditional man and woman relationships. There's same-sex relationships. There's single lonely. There's a single partier. There's single with cats. There's single and called. Somebody's even proposed marrying a shoe. There's even just plain living together and cohabitation, which, by the way, that's about 60 to 70% of the population. And regardless of who or what you want to marry, it all seems like a bunch of rules. It seems like, you know, it's the next thing. It's a contract. It's something even culturally that we say, like, I don't know, it just seems like the next thing we're supposed to do is just get married. Even if we're living together, married, cohabitating, there's this understanding that this is how we'll operate. And it's still a contract. And contracts are good, but what if marriage is more than that? Surely, we the church, God's people, have an idea for God's plan for marriage, right? We understand what this mysterious covenant means. We understand the metaphor, don't we? I mean, we're fighting so hard for it out there. Actually, I'm not sure we understand all that well. Because something seems a bit off. In fact, studies show that 32% of born-again Christians will get divorced. Not bad. But only 33% of agnostic or atheists get divorced. Ugh. That's not quite the noticeable difference you might expect from those who have the inside track on God's purposes. One would think that Christians would have, you know, not so close a divorce rate. <laughs> but wait, what about sex? Good news, 74% of teenage Christians believe in abstaining from sex before marriage. And that's good. 
Unfortunately, 88% of those same people had sex before they were married. On average, just so you know, 80% of unmarried evangelicals admit to having premarital sex. 80%. What is the rest of secular America at? 88%. There's little discernible difference. So when Christians talk about what love and family are, when we compare actual Christian marriages with actual non-Christian marriages, there doesn't seem to be a whole lot of difference. And this begs the question, what are we actually fighting for? The notion of what family is supposed to be? Do we even know what we're talking about? What is the true nature of family? What is even the point? Find the place, okay? Yeah, of course. I'll okay. Do. Um, well, are you sure this is where you want it to go? Because I'm. Yeah. It's great. Thanks for asking, though. Okay, great. Um, Kevin. Evan. You surprised me. This is all natural compost here. I didn't know there was another kind. Of course there is. Okay. Check this out. Hold on. Wait. I, I'm just. Are you sure this is like where we want this to? Go? This is the best spot for it. Trust me. Okay. Yeah. Look at that. I'm. I'm just not sure that. This is going to work at all. you three to four yards of prime compost there. It's going to be perfect. I don't know. Check this out. <gasps> Give me that shovel. Shovel. Kevin. I'm Evan. The soil is a natural ecosystem of life. It's got tiny little creatures in there that just replenish all the nutrients. You know, the shameful thing is that farmers, they just pour chemicals all over this, you know, and they, they kill those tiny creatures. Why would they do that? I don't know. Maybe they don't want to get their hands dirty. Huh. Be any number of reasons, really. But all life starts with a healthy soil. Yeah, so what's this stuff made of? That's, uh, that's cow manure. It's cow manure. Cool. Yeah. Funny, doesn't smell like. Kevin, what are you, uh, what are you making out here? What is this all about? Well, it's gonna be like this big sort of sprawling. Um... Hey guys! Hey guys! Oh hey, Amy Sherman! I got lemonade. Come on in. I would love some lemonade. I would love some. I would really love. Some. To do. You know what I really like about manure? Um, it's kind of like family. Okay. Um, you know, it goes into the soil, and the soil is the foundation for the flourishing of the crops. And, you know, in God's design, a healthy family is the foundation of healthy society. Yeah, I guess I could see. I mean, God's design is for family is kind of all over the place. You can see it in compost, you can see it in, you know, like Norman Rockwell stuff, like the Huxtables, that's another good sign. And you know where else you can see it? I think to see it really well, we have to take a look in the book. It's the big book, that is. Let's do it. Okay. We'll start with the first family of all civilization. Adam, Eve, Cain, and oh dear. Hmm. Moving right along, how about we go to the second family? Father Abraham. Father Abraham. He had many sons. Except that first one, was it with his wife? Remember it was with the servant girl? The maid servant. And didn't he leave them in the desert to die? 
Mm -hmm. And then the son that he did have, the promised son, mm -hmm. he took him to a mountain. To kill him. Yeah. Okay, 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 David. Yeah, you got that whole Bathsheba thing, though, you know. That is true. Messing around with his friend's wife. and Oh, and then the son raped the daughter, and they all went to war. Well, and then you have, you know, Gomer running around on Hosea, Samson and Delilah, snip, snip. Judah sleeping with the daughter-in-law, because she was impersonating a prostitute. Deception, <laughs> lies, incest, murder. The deepest truths about marriage and family, they are in the Bible. We, we just have to dig deeper. We need to start with the Trinity. God is one, but he's three. Continually pouring himself out, pouring himself into himself. His whole life is grace, abundance, gift. know that God makes man in his image. Like God, he is creative. Like God, he has the power of intelligence and reason. In his very being, he is abundant, he overflows. And like God, his nature is to pour himself out in love, to give himself away to another. So God made man, male and female. He made them, in their very nature, made for another. where things get really interesting. As an individual, man is pointed outside himself. But this partnership of marriage, it too is to pour itself out. It is pointed outside itself. It's made for others. You should see a pattern emerging. Wait, 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 wait. Where do we find a family like that in the Bible? Well, there's one. I mean, think about the Holy Family. The angel Gabriel comes to Mary, explains God's plan for the life of the world, and it's a mystery, but she says, let it be. She says, yes. And, you know, Joseph, too. The angel comes to him, and he says yes. He could have divorced her. He was within his contractual rights, but he says yes, even though it's, it's a mystery. By saying yes, they agree to participate in God's plan. God so loved the world that he gave. Why? When we say yes to marriage, we are saying yes to the life of the world because we're saying yes to children, and yes to family, and yes to the person we're marrying. It's all linked, like Mary and Joseph. We say yes to the mystery ahead, because in that mystery is an abundance, new life. This is why we can say that family is the first and foundational yes of society. Ultimately, saying yes to marriage is about living a life of offering. Marriage is a yes to your beloved. 
and you and your beloved saying yes to your family and your family saying yes to the world. That's amazing and everything. Like, I just, I'm having trouble imagining bringing up a family just to give it away. I think that some families really, at their best they can live with that kind of purpose, that, that God can actually empower families to, to live for the life of the world. I, you know, Evan, you should check out, you should check out this family. This is a family that God has empowered to live for the life of the world. Hello? Dwight. Hey, Evan, what's going on? Well, I'm wrestling with the uh, family, love, marriage, manure, and everything in between today. Okay, I wasn't expecting that. Uh, tell me more, what do you mean? Chase this for me, will you? Wow, um, I'm on it. Great. Hey, later, my friend. All right, see you later. And so I set off on a great expedition to find this super family with their own business card. I wanted to know everything about them, who they were, what they did, how they lived, and how do you pronounce their last name? Hmm. And after much searching, I found them. This was going to be one of my greatest expeditions ever. You break it right in half and you do Zweig Heisen. Which actually means quiet house, ironically <laughs> enough. <laughs> so, let's introduce you to the Zweigheisens. There's Ed, both the patriarch and architect, a patriarchitect. Melanie, an incredible teacher and a fantastic mother. Gabe, the oldest son and airsoft expert. Christian, middle child, cool, calm, remarkable lung capacity. And Greta, who wants to change the world along with her super special family. What if we were to answer, we don't think we are special? We're just a normal family. Well, I'd say we're normal as any other family in the world. Yeah. Um, with our own oddities, but special is probably, we're nothing special. Okay, so maybe they're not the super family I built them up to be, but they're still changing the world. So the question burning in my mind was... How? <laughs> one step at a time. This one step at a time philosophy goes a long way. We're just intentional. Anybody can do this. Anybody can do this. It's really just a slight shift of focus. So many times you can get doing so many things and you, you lose track of focus. Focus on the everyday things. Every little action that you take is reflecting the Heavenly Father in each of your choices. It's about cultivating virtues as a family and every day asking the question. Are you intentional in living out loving, encouraging blessing? Okay. Pause right here, because there's something about those three words that's very important. Let's go back. Further, further. Okay, stop. Right there. See it? A little closer. Boom. The family motto. Loving, encouraging, blessing. The key to it all. Right. And that loving, encouraging, blessing is actually something that we can look to in every situation. These three words are the motivation behind each step that the family takes. And it's incorporating those ideas into all our actions as an individual, but then also as a family, to see if we can live that out. Mm -hmm. And that goes into the next generation and the next generation again. So let's hear about this next generation and what they've done. Gabe hosted a water treading competition in the family pool to provide treadle pumps for people in Africa. Christian grew gourds and sold them to buy goats and other animals for families all across the world. And Greta started a walk which has helped bring awareness and clean water to those in the world who don't have it. I want to shape my family like this. They've taught us to be caring and loving. Well, from my dad, he's taught me how to be the man that I want to be. They've taught me how to tend to everyone's needs. It's a lot different than the American norm, but I like how close our family is. For me, the small picture and the big picture are all part of the same story. So what we do as a husband and wife and how we interact with our family mm -hmm. is a small picture. But at the same time, the big picture. it is the big picture mm -hmm. because what you want to do is make sure that your small steps are playing a role in that larger story, in that bigger picture. You don't have to 
jump off and save the world all at right. once. It's not one of those things you don't have to move right. to a different country. You don't have to. That's why I would say we're a normal family because we're right here doing our part, mm -hmm. remembering to just love, mm -hmm. be encouraging, and be a blessing. Dear everybody, listen to the words of the gospel. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has looked with favor on his lowly servant. What do we mean when we talk about family? Why do we treat family and marriage like it's a matter of rules and contractual relationships? Clearly, that is not the fullness of the gift. Family is the economy of love. It is the school of love. It is where we learn our true nature to be pointed outward as individuals, pointed outward toward others, and sometimes toward the other of a spouse. And as spouses, pointed outward towards children and family, and as families, pointed out to our communities. And as glorious a gift it is to be created, to need, and to spring from love, the grand mystery is that family is often so unromantic, so everyday, so humble. We learn our nature of love, not in grand gestures to save the world, but in the normal, everyday struggle to love, to encourage, to bless those beside us. In family, our character is formed and given to the world. And in doing this, we tend to the soil that is the foundation of all society. And this, this is generational work. And like soil, it's messy. That's cow manure. Remember, Jesus' family tree was wrought with liars and cheats, adulterers and idolaters. So wherever we find ourselves, whatever the mess our families are in, let us remember Christ, who entered into that mess, into that exile, not to condemn it, but to bring life. So family is the first and foundational yes to society because it is the first and foundational yes to our nature to pour ourselves out like Christ, to be gifts, to love. So let us love in all the little ways that will bear fruit in the next generation. Let us be generous with life. Let us be generous with our families. Let us be generous with our yes, with our great let it be to God's plan for the life of the world. So let us start by saying, let it be yours, Evan.